Okay, so this video is going to quickly, not quickly, but kind of start to introduce the topic of trigonometry. Um, trigonometry is the next unit that we are going to be covering in this class. And I just wanted to kind of take some time today to talk about what trigonometry is, where does it come from, and kind of what we're going to use it for. Uh, the, the where it comes from, I think, for this topic is going to be one of the more important things because I really want you to understand that when we say, uh, you know, these different trigonometry terms and we're using these trigonometry things in a certain way, that they're not just magic buttons that we're pressing on our calculator. These actually come from something, and it's, it's something that you could do just as well without a calculator. Um, and it's, it's actually all based on what we learned in the last unit. So the, the kind of the technical definition, the one you're going to see a lot of, is that trigonometry is a branch of mathematics that talks about the relationships between the sides and angles of triangles. Specifically for us, it's going to be right triangles. Uh, and those relationships between the sides and the angles are the whole deal with this thing. And so far, we've kind of seen some of those relationships. Um, with similar triangles and the Pythagorean theorem. So a couple of things that we've started off with. These are things that we've already covered. They're going to kind of lead up to where trigonometry comes from. So the first thing we have is kind of this idea that similar triangles is the basis of trigonometry. It's the whole deal with this thing. When we've had two triangles that we know are similar, we could write a proportion and use that to solve for a missing side. For example, here you've got a picture of a kind of you know, famous example in mathematics using the sun casting a shadow to calculate the height of a pyramid. And we've done something very similar with the flagpole outside. Um, so far, all of the things we've done with similar triangles like this with actual applications have come from a situation where some natural phenomenon is creating those similar triangles. So here we've got the pyramid casting a shadow along with some sort of a, a known measuring stick also casting a shadow. Um, and those, that's been pretty much the most common one, but we've created those triangles kind of naturally. Now, the big step to take here is that we don't have to have both of those triangles existing in the real world. As long as we know that we have two triangles that are similar, it's going to work. The second triangle could be one that we found in a book. It could be one that we created ourselves. It could be one that has nothing to do with the problem we're actually trying to solve. Uh, and in that sense, it's kind of not a real triangle like the other ones we've been talking about. But because it's similar to the one we're dealing with, it's still going to work to solve the problem. Now, a couple of things here. For us, all of the triangles that we're going to talk about are going to be right triangles. And kind of the other thing here is we remember from similarity that if two triangles have two of the same angles that they will be similar to each other. So here, this triangle has a 90 degree angle and it also has a 40 degree angle. So any other triangle we create that also has a 90 degree angle and a 40 degree angle will be similar by angle angle. And so the 40 degree angle is gonna be the one we're particularly interested in. All of these triangles will have a 90. It's that 40 degree angle that's gonna tell us which other triangle that we're going to be talking about. And we call these things, or I like to call these things, reference triangles. Um, and we create these things either in a book or we keep a list of them. Um, and so one of the first things you might decide to do here is if I had a book that had all of these triangles in it, I wouldn't have to be creating all these triangles every time or finding them somewhere or hoping that they're just going to exist in the real world, I'd have a, a nice little reference book, kind of like a dictionary of every single angle. So when I had a problem with a 30 degree angle in it, I just open up my book to the 30 degree angle and there's a triangle that I can use. Um, <clears throat> and so the whole idea of this is if we were to just go through and create a book with every single five degree angle measure, a triangle with a five and a 90, a triangle with a 10 and a 90, a triangle with a 15 and a 90, kind of all the way up we would get super close to being able to solve every single problem we wanted to. Um, you know, even if we ended up with a 22 degree angle, well, that's pretty close to 20 and we could probably make it work. And the real nice thing about using 90 degrees as the other angle is that for our reference angle here, like the, the non 90 degree angle, the 25, if I have a 25 degree angle in one uh, corner of the triangle, I have to have the 65 in the other because 25 and 65 make 90. And that's going to be how we actually 
you know, they add up to 180. We know that. So rather than having to create, you know, a, a triangle for every single angle, we can kind of get away with, you know, about like nine or so triangles would get us all the way from five to 45. And then they're automatically going to have the other angles going down the other side. Um, now, the reason we're choosing 90, first of all, the biggest reason is just that it's a super nice angle to include. It's got a nice right angle. You can create that pretty much any way you want. And it's really easy to do constructions with 90 degrees. We learned how to construct 90 degree angles. The other reason is it allows us to use things like the Pythagorean theorem <coughs> in, our, in our work when we're trying to find these sides. So if I were to set this up where I found the length of this side and the length of this side by measuring, I could find that hypotenuse by using the Pythagorean theorem. And in prior years, we've actually done this. We've gone through and created an entire book from 5 to 45 and then back down to, to 95 on the other triangle. So we had access to all these triangles that we could use to solve problems with. Now, a couple of things here. Um, first of all, we have to use these triangles. And so this is just going to be setting up a proportion just like we did in Chapter 7. So if we're looking at this thing here, um, we have some reference triangles at the top. Maybe we have some reference triangles in the book, and this is the one we're trying to solve. So if I wanted to, for example, solve for X, first step is to choose a reference triangle. Well, this one right here is my reference triangle. It has the 75 in it. I'm going to decide on a ratio to compare. I could go between triangles. I could look at you know the 80 to the 25. But a better way, because we're doing these reference triangles, is to compare with insides. Maybe I want to compare the X to the 80. Well, the similar sides here would be the 24 to the 25. So I might do a ratio like X over 80 equals 24 over 25, and I'd be able to solve that. Now, the next step is where these come from first. We, as humans, came up with this idea a very, very long time ago, so long ago that paper really wasn't a thing yet. And so a lot of this information that we have is actually on clay tablets like the one you see here. This one is from about 1800 BC, so almost 4,000 years ago. Um, and so rather than drawing all these triangles, which would have been almost impossible and just would have taken up so much work, you really don't need the triangle itself. All you really need are the sides. And so this triangle, or this, this clay tablet here is from um, Babylon, which is essentially modern day Iraq. And it records the three sides of the triangle along with the angles in that triangle. And that's really all our reference triangles are, is that we have, for example, like the last one you saw, we had a 25 degree angle and we knew the three sides. That's all we need. Now, if we're going to do that, one thing we do need to do is we need to decide on names for those sides. We can't just talk about a side being 5 or 12 or 13 without saying which side it is. And all of that is based on the reference angle, the angle we're talking about. And like the last case, it was the 25 degree angle. And so what we have here are the three sides. First of all, the hypotenuse is always the, still the longest side. That hasn't changed at all. The side directly across from the angle, and you'll see this angle has this weird circle with a line through it. That is a Greek letter called theta. Um, we'll use that, that letter for angles quite a bit. So the, the, ang the side across from that angle, directly across, is called the opposite side. And the side that is touching it, the, the leg that is touching the angle, is called the adjacent side. And so all we would really need to write down in our book is for a 25 degree angle, the opposite side is 9, the adjacent side is 18, and the hypotenuse is 20. And we'd have all that we needed. <clears throat> so kind of the last step here is people started to realize that those lengths on their own weren't really what they needed. When we go to actually use these measurements in a triangle or in a problem, we're always comparing two sides. We're writing a ratio. In this example, we used x and 80. x is the opposite side, 80 is the hypotenuse. So what we were really using was the sine. And so we had came up with three names here that just describe the ratios of the triangles. So sine was the ratio of the opposite side divided by the hypotenuse. Cosine was the, the uh, ratio of the adjacent side divided by the hypotenuse. And tangent was the opposite side divided by the adjacent side. And so what we found out is that we don't actually even need the side lengths themselves. All we really need is the ratios between them because we're using these things in a proportion anyway. The ratio is what we actually need. 
And that kind of brings us to where we were at even just like 50 years ago. You had in the back of your book a trig table. And so these trig tables recorded the sine, the cosine, and the tangent of each whole number degree from 0 to 90. Um, and so the sine, if you were looking at the sine of a one degree angle, that means the, the ratio, the division problem of the opposite side divided by the hypotenuse. In this case, it turns out to be 0 0.0175. Uh, if, you were to, if you were to draw a triangle with a one degree angle, measure those sides and divide them, you'd get pretty close to that. Now this would cover us for just about everything we would ever need to do, except for the fact that we might have fractions in there. And so if I go, if I go back to this page here, here I've got a 70 degree angle. I'm talking about the, the x and the 80, the opposite and the hypotenuse. And so I'd need to look up in my table, what is the sine of 75? And that would just take one side of my proportion and make it a decimal that I know. The other side is still going to be, you know, 24 over, uh, sorry, that's going to take up the one side that used to be the reference triangle. So instead of 24 over 25, I'll have the decimal equivalent from my table equals to x over 80. And then the last step is, thankfully, in the last 50 years, calculators have been invented. Uh, they're older than that. But this is about when you got to having the point of calculators that you could buy and use in a classroom. So these buttons on your calculator, you've probably noticed them and wondered what the heck they do. You have a, a button that says SIN, that is just short for sine, COS is short for cosine, and TAN is short for tangent. So if you wanted to know the ratio of the opposite side over the hypotenuse of a 25 degree angle, you could hit that sign button, type 25 to tell your calculator that's the reference angle, and hit enter. It'll tell you what that is um, really, really fast. Now, this is a point where I want to mention if you are using an iPhone calculator, you need to stop. Uh, that calculator does not handle sine, cosine, and tangent the way we will handle it in math classes from here on out. So please use a calculator like Desmos or a handheld scientific calculator like the ones you see on the screen right now. Um, they're, it's going to be very important because if you get used to using that calculator on your phone, um, it is going to make your life a whole lot more difficult. So finally, the question of why. Why do we care? Besides it being a, a nice, fun area of math, trigonometry, even just the basics of right triangle trigonometry that we're going to talk about in this class is going to let us do pretty much all of the math you need to do in, in classes like physics, um, topics like astronomy, uh, lots of things like that. So forces, when you go to calculate forces on different things, whether you're pushing, pulling, calculating gravity's effect on the trusses of a bridge, for those of you that have taken POE, you are using trigonometry to do all that work. If you wanted to calculate the heading or the direction you'd have to point a plane or a boat to account for the wind and end up where you want, you need to use trigonometry. To calculate distances to stars, we actually use trigonometry. We set up um, different points on the Earth to create an angle, measure the distance between those two points, measure the angle to the stars, and we can use trigonometry to find the distances. You can also use it the same idea to calculate the diameter of the Earth, which is one of the first ways people did that. Then trigonometry gets even more crazy, and this is something you're not going to get into until probably pre-calc, but we have other ways of visualizing or, or conceptualizing trigonometry besides right triangles, and that's where it gets even more useful. Trigonometry is going to show up in so many different areas. Um, it is probably the single most useful uh, area of math that you're going to get to in high school until calculus, if you get to calculus in high school. So that's kind of what's coming up here. And you'll notice I really didn't talk about how to do any of this at all because that's not the point right now. Um, we will get jumped in that on Monday um, with, with how to do this. We'll review, obviously, the names of these things and how it works, but we will jump into that on Monday. So I'll see you all then. Have a great weekend.